Dan, I'm going to come to you very shortly for your insights. But first, that solidarity demonstration taking place in Tel Aviv. Thousands taking a stand under the banner, Israel Stand with Ukraine. Our correspondent, Pierre Kloschendler, is there in Tel Aviv at Abima Square. Pierre, we can see the blue and yellow flags in full display. Talk us through the reaction when President Vladimir Zelensky was speaking just moments ago. People just listened and barely applauded the speech because I think that they were caught by very strong emotions, actually. Um, when, he, when the president, Volodymyr Zelensky, mentioned the need for maybe supplying Ukraine with the Iron Dome anti-missile system, the people applauded and cheered the, the Ukrainian president. But there was also a very... Uh, a note of a very strong note of sadness in the crowd amidst the crowd because you could see President Volodymyr Zelensky in some sort of bunker in Kiev, uh, looking tired, looking actually exhausted, and uh, in some sort of military T-shirt. And the people here understand that this is an embattled president representing an embattled people. They drew a comparison with Nazism. I'm not sure that every Israeli will buy into that because the situation is different. But on the other hand, he, when Volodymyr Zelensky spoke about the mediation effort by the Israeli president, uh, by the Israeli prime minister, sorry, uh, there was some note of skepticism in Zelensky's speech uh, because he said you cannot mediate between good and evil. And this is basically the equation in this rally, uh, the fight against evil, the need to protect the good. Uh, the mayor of Tel Aviv, Ron Khuldai, spoke in those terms. Zelensky spoke in those terms. The uh, Ukrainian ambassador to Israel also spoke in those terms. And there is another element in this battle for public opinion at this moment. Just here, as pr uh, President Vladimir Zelensky spoke live, with uh, in, in, in this forum, in front of Israeli legislators, but also in front of the Israeli public, the Supreme Court of, his, of, of Israel is um, delving onto the thorny issue of whom to allow inside Israel uh, after an appeal presented by a lawyer who represents the Ukrainian ambassador to Israel, and the debates are being carried live at the same time. So there is a, <laughs> sorry, a legal battle on one hand and a battle for public opinion. And these two battles here in Israel are coalescing at this moment. Benita? Talking of public opinion, Pierre, you've been speaking to people there on the ground for the last few hours in the build-up to the speech. Give us an idea of the sentiment there. Why are people coming out in their numbers? What are they saying to you? There is extreme sadness and extreme worry because many of the people that are here are from the former Soviet Union. Some of them are from Ukraine and they all feel a sense of urgency, of emergency, that there is a real tragedy uh, in, unfolding in Ukraine. And uh, people are even more radical than President Volodymyr Zelensky because they don't end, only mention, um, you know, uh, defensive equipment such as the Iron on dome on guns. They also want helmets. They want flag jackets uh, to protect the Ukrainian soldiers. They want a no-fly zone. And this appeal is here, but it also echoes uh, appeals that we've seen in various capitals in Western countries. So you have basically the same kind of uh, mood in this crowd. A lot of blue and yellow flags and a lot of glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes of Ukraine. You know, this famous slogan, Slava Ukraini, Geroam Ukraini. And uh, this is what you hear here, trying to cheer up the, a very, very sad mood, actually. Correspondent Pierre Kloschengler, who's been covering this invasion from Kiev in recent weeks, now live for us in Tel Aviv at Abima Square. Thank you so much, Pierre, for that update.